and we're back for another episode of Bikes and Brews. And if you haven't done so far, go ahead and subscribe and like it. If you like what you see, I like what I and see. It, and the moment we say anything remotely incorrect and offensive, that too, start an argument in the comments. Totally. Yes. And this guy will respond with like a thousand words. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> More than he said in the last 10 years. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. I would appreciate it. So before we get into the biking part of it, let's talk about the brew part of it. Yeah. What do we got today? This is another interesting one. I am excited. I mean, the specs for this one. Okay, but what do we have here? not hopeful. Uh, this was another one that I found at World Market that looked like it could possibly be fun to watch. Is that them. G-N-O or G-O or what? what is that? That's a, that's a stylized A. Gao. Yeah. Okay. Gao. Mm -hmm. Gao. So this is the Ma Master Gao Brewery. Baby Jasmine Tea Lager. So that's the name of this beer. I'm hoping. Baby it... Jasmine Tea Lager. And it has a matte finished label, which is actually pretty cool. What's the label and taste it... like? I don't know. Okay. This one's 5.6% alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think it has real bits of baby It's actually, in it? you could tell, like somebody spent some time with this label. Yeah. Sure. Somebody's pretty nice. Now this is called... Baby Jasmine Tea Lager, and on the back it says unfiltered. So I don't know like where this one's going. It's got real bits of baby. Let me pour this for you. Good. I'm assuming Jasmine was well, the baby. I have no idea what color this is going to come out. Oh, huh. that's that it looks like a lager. It's it's unfiltered, like it so it's a little cloudy. It is a lager. And say that's what it says. On but it's unfiltered too, so oh, it's a little bit more orangey than I was expecting. Orangey is a word. I'm really hoping this doesn't taste like I think it's going to. I'm gonna kind of keep up with you guys. Wait, what do you think it's gonna taste like? <sighs> I think it's gonna take taste like tea more than I think. Like I'm not my, expecting like it my, to, but I think it'll be strong because the, the last beer we had was strong. Like it had a distinct flavor. So if they think they're calling out tea lager. I think the tea is going to be a strong hit. We're going to find out. I'm not much of this ahead. is going to taste like my grandmother's bathroom smelled. Is that a good thing? No. Okay. All right, I'll give that to you. Who has right. fond memories of their grandmother's bathroom? <laughs> Usually grandmas are like really like highly like on their cleaning and spick and span and everything. Where's that face? <laughs> Hold the comment. Hold the comment. <laughs> okay, hold it. Do not, do not preface this. Let's give the man a many words over here. I get a shot of this one. He likes his beer. Let's see how he likes this I one. I think he might like it. Mm, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, let's see. You can really taste the bits of the babies. It didn't hit me with that tea flavor right off the bat as, as much as I was expecting. Yeah. Thank I God. thought it was going to, yeah, thank God. Because I, I, I thought it would be too strong in a certain direction, which this tastes a lot more about. I, I kind of like this. Uh, it's, yeah, I, it's a little sweet. I think this might be my favorite beer we've bar. tried so far. <laughs> yeah, the, the beers we tried tonight. Yeah. And then last it's few sweet, episodes. And it's a lager and it's right up his alley. Yeah, I, I I I like it too though. I think it's interesting. Oddly enough, this I'm, has a rating similar to the last one we had. Really? The ja year. the jasmine is not as This is as blowing expected. away the black lager we had. By far. The, you don't, you I don't cannot believe this is coming from the same it? brewery. I cannot believe this is coming from the same brewery. They got range. <laughs> they have range. They they <laughs> they're definitely going for different tastes and different yeah. palettes. This is on the other end of the spectrum. This is I'm the, digging this. So there's the description on this, pale lager providing a firm multi body and pronounced coffee flavor with distinctive floral overtones of jasmine tea. I don't think it really was strong in any of those. It was well, it's well balanced in all of those. Like it's, it's, it's a good summer beer. Mm -hmm. Or if you just want something a little lighter. You and the unfiltered floral? isn't even too yes. strong. It doesn't taste right. too. Taste floral? It, yeah, it, but it, not overly. It's it's good. It comes in and tells you about it, but it doesn't it doesn't sell you. <laughs> All right, let's 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 uh let's talk about the rating right now. Good. RJ, you liked it. What are you gonna give this? I give it a 
Six and a half. That's it? How the hell is How a six? How did you go, bro? <laughs> you give it a D. You, you liked it. You, you gave it a, a six and a half. You gave it a D, and it's good. Hold on. What is a ten to RJ? I like this one. I, I like this one. Yeah. Okay, before, I know we should be going this way, but I want because you had a really interesting look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's the most drinkable I've tried. Since, in the last, since the last four episodes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, I. What's your rating? One to ten. I know. First gut, gut instinct, go right there. Give it the eight. Ooh. Oh. Snowman. Snowman. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's your second eight on the show. Yeah, but the first one was done out of respect for the community. Oh, oh that's oh. true. And the monks from the 14th century. Franciscan monks. They know yes. what they're doing. I know. Frank. Yes. Yes, okay. Frank the monk. Wow. Frank so the monk. So this is actually above that one, technically. Yes, I, you're above Frank the monk. No, I, I think I said it in the last one that the first one that we tried from our pals, the monks, um, was probably the most drinkable. This one, I think, I prefer because it doesn't have as bitter of a finish. No. Oh. It's just like, you could give this to somebody who doesn't like beer and they'd be... Hey, that's you. Okay, yeah, it's me. <laughs> yeah. Be okay drinking. I'm going to give this a nine. Wow. Oh. Oh. I feel yeah. like wow. I feel like I did something this time. <laughs> I like it. You know what it reminded me of? Think when I think of tea, I'm thinking of like an Arnold Palmer. Okay. Like you have like a tea, but it's balanced with the sweetness of the lemon and everything. This isn't like lemony, but it, it has that fruity kind of malty balance with the tea, which But it's is, fresh throughout. It is. And I like that it's unfiltered, it gives it a little bit more complexity and everything. Like I could, I could sit. And I don't understand these. when people call beer refreshing because I feel like they always have that beery aftertaste. Okay. <laughs> and this has less of that. That bitter. The, the tea kind of takes the the summeriness of tea and puts it into beer. Yeah, like an iced tea with yeah. some sweetness. That's what I'm getting from this. Yeah. Like if the first thing I thought of when I t- not the first thing, but one of the main things I thought of when I had uh, Arnold Palmer S- sitting on a wraparound like a porch. Rattler. Huh? Rattler. Have you had a Rattler? Apparently I don't think not. so. Apparently not. It's lemonade and beer. Same, same thing. Oh, almost like a shandy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I get that. I would go out and buy some more of these. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Not yet? I accomplished that. <laughs> <laughs> he would never go out and buy them just for a pure no. money, so I'm not going <laughs> to ask him. But um, that's interesting. You like beer and you don't. But do you, in general, like more hoppy beers or just this just it didn't do anything for you? Yeah, more hoppy beers. It's too. Little you little like IPAs? He wants something more aggressive. Yeah. He yeah. wants more of that grapefruit shit. The kicking in the, bo- the kicking back in of the, the head. Teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Kicking yeah. in the teeth all day long. I like to enjoy what I'm drinking. High IBUs. I like this. Right. I like this. All right. All right. Let's, let's roll on. So, what are, we, what are we talking about today? We have no idea. What do you feel like talking about? Hmm. Let's talk about... Expectant glance. Let's talk about kits and jerseys and stuff, because it is summer. We, we're segueing into these summer beers and oh. everything. Like, the lightness oh, weight. Like, what do, you, what do you like about the new <laughs> stuff versus the old days? Because I remember in the old days, they had a lot of, like, elastic stuff and with the rubber grip on the bottom. And we don't really see that anymore, at least not on the high-end stuff. You know what I miss? Thicker collars. Oh, I agree. <laughs> they go up a little higher. Yeah. They're like, I don't, I, I'm tired of this thing that kind of cuts down to here. Yeah, and then it's still <laughs> tight, and then you kind of have to unzip it like an inch, and it still fits weird. Yeah. You don't want like that 70s tuft of chef, chest hair? <laughs> like you got going? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're, it's like you're always wearing a sweater with a t shirt on top. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Well then. Well then. I think a lot of it's from the aero stuff. That's what they're doing. Yeah. I think so, it's and I just don't dig it. I, I, I'm with you on that one. I, I kind of miss those days where the collar came up higher, and you unzip for venting and cooling off and everything. The collar definitely sucks for everyday. Riding. I don't. I don't like like the the V neck cut thing on the newer That's, kits. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Well, I, I don't like it like as deep as some right. some brands have. Like it, it literally goes like this. But also, I don't like the. I don't like when it goes up, up the neck, because I feel like when you, when you zip it, it all the way up, like it, it gets, used to. It gets stifling. It used to be where the zipper would go, and then it'd have a flap that protected you from getting the zipper on you, and it was like nice and high. And if you wanted to unzip it, you could. But it kind of felt kind of nice there, and everything. I mean, it's probably technically not the as good. Best still do, right? The best yeah. still go up. There. Yeah, but that was like, yeah, I don't. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't want to feel like I'm in a in a um, a skin suit all the time. Right. And that's the feeling I get with the normal. Yeah, the skin skin suits are cut deeper for sure. And I don't. I I, I want to ride my bike. Granted, I'm not always well, racing. You, guys, you, know you guys are both skin suit people. But I know when I'm putting on a skin suit. When I don't put on a skin suit, I don't want to wear a skin suit. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. What I had a bad experience recently with our uh, latest kit. I had only used it on the Thursday night rides. Okay. And you know what you don't have to worry about on Thursday nights? Sunburns. Oh. Yeah. Did you get a bad sunburn? Yeah. My back yeah. is peeling currently. Oh, that's a good point, because it's been pretty hot and sunny lately. Yeah. I don't remember the older kits having those issues they as much. They did not. Because now, like, even if you're not out in the broad daylight, you could see your shoulder straps through the kit, like, all that kind of stuff. It's just take it for granted now. Well, and this, the thing is, like, the previous kits, and I don't know if this is something that's just gotten more normal or if it's just a, with our kit supplier, how they change something. Mm -hmm. But I never, I don't feel like there's a difference in cooling between the two. Yeah. I don't feel like I think one it's definitely is... more arrow. It's definitely more arrow than the, than years past when you had folds and stuff going on and things like that. Yeah, not like the old old kits, but I'm talking just 15, the previous. Fifteen years ago. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> you know how old he is. Yeah, that's true. He was like a fetus. He is fifteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, was, I like to distinguish. Like now, I literally. I was Seventeen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I I literally have to struggle now when I look at somebody, you know, that's, are they wearing a skin suit or not? Like, it's it's really hard to tell the difference now, you know? And I don't like the fact that, like, you know, like it, the perfect example now, I looked at the Olympics, and the cross-country guys are wearing their road kits, you know, like, yeah. typical. I thought that and they're all, that. like, they have their mug shot on the TV, and you can see their shoulder straps and everything through it, and you're just like... I thought... For UCI mountain bike stuff, it was, or was it outlawed and downhill? Skin suits? Yeah. Yeah, they got rid of it. Okay, but then they came back. Yeah. No. They're using them. They're well, using, they're using they're them now. Using them this year. Cross country, yeah. Cross country is, but not downhill. Downhill, downhill is really controversial because they're yeah. calling them sort of skin suits, but they're not. They're like precision Because they're full bagginess. leg, they're whole bit, yeah. yeah. But it seems to me like that would actually be safer if you're like cutting through trees and stuff like that. You're not going to. Yeah, caught hooked, on stuff. Yeah, 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 hooked on something. Yeah, but I mean, the other part is downhill if, courses. You're not like brushing against big leafy. True, trees you're just gonna smash into cactus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the whole point of downhill, down. like you want it baggy enough. Before it was all fashion, but now it's like you still gotta fit pads underneath. You know, knee, you know, shin, elbow, shoulder, Let's spine, on, all that. Put it on top. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think, RJ? I agree with you. I mean, yeah, it's not like it's, it's not like it's it's not like it's jeans. <laughs> I mean, the the the, the technical the technical part of the fabric I like now. Like I like the bibs. I like the chamois that are coming out now. They are making and I like the laser cutting of the ends and things like that. But there's something to be said about the cut themselves, you know. I do appreciate a leg gripper though. Really? I feel like there's a couple kits I've had from some other manufacturers that have got rid of the leg gripper. I think all the new, almost everybody now has gotten rid of the leg gripper. Our current kit has them. Yeah. But it's built into the fabric. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's almost like yeah in the like the big band at the bottom. Yeah, I just had a, I just had it doesn't actually have a black with a silicone. Strip. Yeah, there's not silicone dots. Yeah, but, or whatever. But it actually, you know, it it, it holds nicely. Yeah. Whereas there's a couple other kids that were trying to advertise of like, you know, they no leg. Oh, they're flopping around. And they just, I don't like feeling it move. Mm. And it did, just felt like it wasn't anchored in place. Yeah. 
Yeah. We'll talk about this other stuff related to your kids. Is there anything that you'd like to see again? I'd, I'd like to see Morena Wool kits make a comeback for like winter time. You know, I don't think people like I see like some kits out there that are nice that are long sleeve that have a little bit more style. They're like thin, thin Morena Wool. All right. I kind of like that comfort, that that kind of that cozy feeling. What are you looking at right now? For that cold Southern California. We're st- we're in Mission <laughs> Viejo. <laughs> <laughs> you I I just I just checked. We're, we're still in Mission we're Viejo. Still in Mission Viejo. I'm talking about the the middle of winter, and not the not the, the really heavy Eddie Merckx ones. I'm talking about like. A nice thin, like the Italians make some good ones and stuff. You know, it's the dead nice. of winter at fifty degrees. Forty. <laughs> it goes down on forty. Okay. Yeah. You know, we might put a vest on. Do you ride? Yeah. 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 Do you ride? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I like to. I put on shoe covers. For what? It gets cold. You forget when you get that wind chill factor, and when it's in the forties, it's it's cold enough. Net gaiter, full finger gloves. Yeah, and I like the coziness of the Moreno wall. Okay. Huh. Yeah, no, for me, if, you, it, if it's if it's forty five, I'm I'm doing arm warmers, a vest, right? Leg warmers. At but night. you don't you don't want to vary that. Like, do you go base layer, neck gaiter, anything like that? I'm not a believer in base layers at all. For warmth. Nah. I like that. I like to have that coziness next to me. I. If I if I crack the vest open, I want the airflow. No, no, for warmth. Like having a nice like base layer. Never bothered. Never bothered. Because the because the vest keeps all the air out anyhow. What about a cycling cap underneath your helmet? I've tried them a couple times, and I can't find why anybody would bother. Really? Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like having it. Like I feel. From from a fashion perspective, I get it. Like it's it's pretty yeah, cool. It blocks the vents. It kind of it adds another level. Get, you now you're adding the visor back. You know, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, that I don't quite get. Okay. But like I said, from like a history perspective, like old school cool cycling cap, I'm cool with it. Mm-hmm. But I want my helmet to breathe and all that. Yeah, winter when it doesn't matter. Yeah, and then, then I'm just gonna throw an aero helmet on. Oh, okay, all right. Well, he teaches on. Teaches on. It's like it's like a helmet built in, less vents, because it just has less vents. Okay. Well. Mm. All right. All right. Well, I think we've we've kind of exhausted this one. What do you think? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> exactly. The man said it, summed it up right there. Perfect. So it's time to move on. Okay. So, wait, wait, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. There. I guess there. I guess there is one question I have though. Uh oh. Uh oh. You're wearing uh, leg warmers. Yes. What do you do with socks? Over or under? Depending on the length of the leg warmer, most of the time there's a gap from, yeah. from the end of the leg warmer to the top of the sock. There's okay. a little. There's maybe this much gap. But if you're going full, like tight all the way, then it goes over the sock. Okay. I never. Do you ever like if if you had long johns where they go down to your shoe? Do you put your sock over it? No, because it usually has a zipper or something at that point. Flop over the top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'd go over the over the top of the sock because that way you can get it off. But I don't think they really do knee warmers that go that low. Well, it'd be leg warmer. A knee warmer would go down to like where the top of the sock is, like a one inch. I guess I don't really have any leg warmers. Probably because you live in Southern warm- California. Well, if it, I'll wear a long john if it gets to the point where it has to go all the way to the shoe. Yeah. And then I have a shoe cover that the real winter ones I have that go up like a booty. Yeah. And that just seems like yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems to be too thick for the leg warmer to go over it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the other part yeah, is then yeah. you get then you get more waterproofing, right? Yeah. Well, windproofing mainly. Sure, that too. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes it, sometimes it's not that the winds are blowing; it's what the winds are blowing. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well. Well, until next time. Yeah. Start an argument in the comments. Like, su- subscribe, whatever you like. Absolutely. And we'll RJ catch you next will, time. RJ will police the comment section. Yes, he will. He'll, he'll set you straight. And with that, we are pieced out.